Hello everyone, my name is Dean Schmidt. I'm the founder at BasecampMeta.com as well as MetaSearchMarketing.com. Today we're going to actually put together a new presentation, our Basecamp Meta Educational Series. We've done something similar to this before, but we're going to tweak this just a little bit to talk about your Meta 101 for 2021 and how we adjust our MetaSearch campaigns today. So with that, our agenda, we'll be breaking this down into some individual sessions so that you don't have to watch everything all at one time. Uh, we'll start off with talking about, of course, what MetaSearch is and why you care about it. Uh, do a little bit of myth busting on your MetaSearch. We'll talk about setting those goals. We'll talk about your expectations, which are going hand in hand with those goals, budgeting for MetaSearch, and also how MetaSearch rolls into the bigger picture. So with that, let's return to our part one. What is MetaSearch? And why do I care? So when we talk about meta search, uh, we have to, of course, talk about Google. They are definitely the big dog when we talk about all the meta search channels, certainly not the only ones. But when we think in terms of why meta search is so relevant, we have to look at how it fits into the landscape, into the ecosystem. So normally when we think about our digital marketing, we think first about our, our branded search terms. We always want to own our branded search terms. If they're looking for your hotel, you want to make sure that you're showing up there. So in this first box, we see that example, followed by the second box with your pay-per-click ads or your search engine marketing, as it's often called. So in those examples, we're paying per click to make sure that we are appearing in the results of that branded search term. Shortly below that, we have the organic search engine optimization. These are the free results that you're optimizing your website to make sure that you're returning on. And then finally, off to the right of that, we have the Google Hotel ad, which appears as part of your Google My Business page. Now, this is really unique when we start talking about hospitality because every business out there has a Google My Business page. But in hospitality, we have points of sale. Why are these points of sale so important? Well, because when we look at this, I know a little bit about the hotel here right away, right? I can see where they're located on a map. I have some pictures of the property. I have some reviews of the property. I can see how they're rated. Uh, and I have information about the rates and availability for the dates that I have selected. Okay, why is that relevant? Well, let's think about it for just a moment. Going back over here to our pay-per-click and SEO, in those scenarios where they go through the, let's call it the front door of a brand.com website, we know that the number one drop-off point to that conversion is usually at the rates and availability screen. Maybe you don't have availability for the dates they're looking for. Maybe the price is too high. Maybe you only have king bedded rooms and they need two double beds, whatever the case may be. That's often the number one drop off point, right? In this example, I already know all of those things. I know where your hotel is. I know what the rates and availability are. So if I have any price sensitivity, I'm not even going to click on it. When I click on that button, to book a reservation, I now have an informed intent of booking a reservation. What does that mean? That means that the conversion rates tend to be higher. Okay, and that's why you see a lot of the brands trying to capitalize on that. They know it converts higher, but it's not just the brands capitalizing it, it's also on the OTAs. They also know that this converts higher, right? And so they're trying to get in on that action as well. So it's not just Google that we're talking about. We also have your usual suspects, your TripAdvisor, Travago, Kayak, and don't forget about Bing, especially in the North American market. So part two, acquiring new customers versus channel shift. So when we think about that meta search example, we often think that Meta only provides channel shift and does not attract new business. Because we're looking at this example we talked about earlier, I've searched for that branded search term and I've come up with those results. And so now it's just a question of, are they booking on my website or are they booking on one of the OTA sites that are listed there? Naturally, we want them to come to ours because that is getting the business directly. We'll talk about goals associated with that in a little bit here. Uh, but you know, you lower cost of sale and typically better converting from the OTAs, right? So it's not that channel shift is a bad thing by any means, but many people will say that, well, hey, they were already looking for you. So this isn't new business. This is about channel shift, right? Well, what if I told you you could get new business off of MetaSearch as well, if you wanted to? We'll talk about that in goals in a little bit, but let's say, for example, that I just search hotels in Sacramento in general. Right off the bat, I'm going to get what we call our local universal four pack. It's 
featuring the four hotels that Google believes I am most likely to be interested in. Now, this can be based on a number of different things, including my search history. If I have searched for a particular hotel previously, oftentimes I'll find it featured in here later on because they know that I've looked at that. They want to go in there and feature it. But other factors that come into play here are going to be the guest reviews. Don't ever underestimate those. So very important. Google doesn't want to put a poorly rated hotel up here because you're not likely to click on it, right? So they want to make sure that the reviews are high. Anything that has a deal, anything that's been popular that other people have looked at before, those are the sort of things that will impact this. But then if I click on the bottom of that to show more hotels, I end up with a screen that now is going to feature all the hotels in that area but there's a certain market ranking that goes with that, right? And so now what we start to see are examples like this where people have paid to be at the top of those search results. These are now called Google Promoted Properties, okay? These are important because these give you an opportunity to influence your market ranking for those people that have not specifically looked for you. Think about this in terms of your search engine marketing, right? Your pay-per-click terms. What is this? This is a non-branded search term. So these are people who were not necessarily looking for you at the beginning that now maybe are looking at you and considering you at your property uh, for breaking. Now we have to understand, of course, that just like a non-branded search term, these are going to have different metrics with them, right? They're going to have different conversion rates, different cost per click, and different elements like that that we need to consider. But you'll notice that a lot of people are taking advantage of those, and it's not just on Google. TripAdvisor has TripAdvisor sponsored placements. Really ideal, especially if you're a property that is, say, a four-star guest-rated property in New York City, but you're not getting to the top of your rankings. Even at four-star rating, that could be on page three in your market rankings. Well, here's an opportunity for you to get up there and get some visibility at the top of that popularity ranking on TripAdvisor. Same thing goes for Trivago. In fact, on Trivago, there's a little button on there where you can click on about how payments to us affect ranking. And it very specifically says, the ranking results reflect your search criteria and our assessment of the attractive attractiveness of this offer compared to offers available on our site. It also reflects the compensation paid by the booking site. So if you want to increase your market rankings on Trivago, you can do that. And it goes on and on. I can say the same thing for every other channel out there. Everybody's got some variation of this that allows you to influence the market ranking. Okay. So when we talk about that myth of meta only providing channel shift and not attract a new business, bust it. Okay. You can attract new business from meta search if that is what you want to do, if those are what your object objectives are. And we'll talk more about that when we get to goals here in just a little bit. So when we talk about setting your goals, that becomes a very important element, right? So we have to think about what is our perspective. Let's say for a moment that you had a $3 cost per click at a 10% conversion rate. Mathematically, that means I need 10 clicks to get a booking times $3 each. That becomes a $30 cost of sale. So if I've got a $30 cost of sale on a one night stay and I've got a $30 nightly rate, that becomes a 100% cost of sale. Wait, that's a problem, right? Well, not necessarily. In fact, that's a real example from a mega resort casino a couple, mega resort casino in Las Vegas a couple of years back. That was actually okay for them because they wanted to make sure they got that direct booking. They needed it to come to them directly as opposed through the OTAs so that they could now wrap their arms around that guest, get them into the players club and all of the other programs that are associated with it, which they can't do if it comes from one of the OTAs, right? So the, the room rate at that point at $30 is insignificant to them. It's all about making sure that they were able to get that guest into their contact center and make sure they were taking advantage of that. But by way of comparison, let's say for a moment that we had a $500 per night rate uh, and a two night stay. Now, all of a sudden that becomes a 3% cost of sale. Oh, wow. That's very low, right? So everything is about perspective. Okay. And so understanding what your perspective is, is going to be one of the most important parts to understanding how we set goals for MetaSearch. So understanding our objectives, and really this applies to any marketing campaign that you're doing. Our goals dictate our path. Okay. That's so important to understand. Objective number one could be branding. I may have an objective that I want to make sure as a brand, especially that 
I have our direct booking link appearing each time, every time that somebody is searching for our properties, non-branded search terms, right? I want to own that space. So I want to make sure that we're coming at the top of that. Maybe it's all about getting volume, it goes hand in hand with that volume or with that branding exercise, but we want to get as much traffic as we possibly can. And that is our objective. Uh, owning the guests. I gave a good example of that with that casino resort and they want to wrap their arms around them. They want to be able to get that guest information and they have a plan about what to do it. Pre-stay, post-stay, during stay, et cetera, so on. Cost of sale, return on ad spend, making sure that that cost of sale is lower than what you're paying to an OTA and just generally diversifying your portfolio. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the section about meta search as part of the bigger picture of your marketing programs. So what to expect from Meta? This is one of the touchiest subjects that we get into a lot when we talk to hoteliers about their Meta search. And so I want to use some actual examples. Now, first and foremost, I want to qualify. What you see here is pre-COVID. Okay, that's very important because I will give you some post-COVID numbers here in just a moment. So pre-COVID, and this is coming from a sampling of several thousands of hotels, and we looked at them by different types of properties. So airport hotels is one category that I isolated, both under $100 and over $100 nightly rate. The reason I did that is because when we think about Google Meta in particular, it's a very spontaneous buying process. I know that I need a hotel by the airport. I know I need it now, tonight, one night, et cetera, so on. I don't know where, I don't know when, and I just want to click it and book it and be done right? So a very quick process. And so that's a really good category. But then we also broke down hotels under $75, 75 to 150, 150 to 300 and 300 above, as well as a high impression share category. Now, what do we see? First of all, our airport hotels, if you'll notice over on the cost per click column over there to the right, are very competitive. That's a very competitive market. The OTAs are bidding on those too because they know that that's a very lucrative market with a spontaneous buying process. So a couple of things happen. First of all, for those that are under $100, my average ADR was $89 for this group. Uh, they had an impression share of about 42% and my average booking value was about $140. So just under a two night length of stay on that. My conversion rates, however, were very high. You'll notice that in fact, on both of those categories, 14 plus percent uh, and then dropping to nearly half of that from all of the other categories on there. So with that first one though, we have a problem because the average booking value is only $140. My cost of sale ends up being close to 17%. That's a little bit problematic because my cost per click was $3 and 39 cents. So that resulted in my return on ad spend only being 5.83. Now, how could we modify that? How could we change that to be a little bit more optimal? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. One, of course, we want to get a lower cost per click. Now, keeping in mind that could sacrifice my impression share. I might drop down from 42% down to say a 30%. So if I'm okay with that, that's one way of doing it. Another way though is to look at some of the other dynamics, things like how do my mobile clicks versus my desktop stack up? Usually they're going to be less expensive. Uh, what about my day of week patterns? What about my lead times to arrival and different elements like that that we could look at to make sure we're getting that cost per click down a little bit while managing the different demographics, the, the user uh, tendencies and capitalizing on those. Now, when we get over $100, now all of a sudden we see the cost per click goes up a little bit, but my average booking value went up significantly. Because of that and because the conversion rate staying steady, my return on ad spend works out. That math works. Now if we move away from the airports and then just go to under $75 in general, uh, we actually lose part of the problem there. One of our problems was that we had a high cost per click and not a lot of revenue to support it. Well, in this case, because now I'm not competing in that airport market anymore, my cost per click went down significantly, down to $1.22. So because of that, even though my average booking value is just $113, I can still have a really high return on my ad spend, a good number of about 7.2 you see there. Uh, so we did lose conversion rate. My conversion rate dropped in half but my cost of sale went down significantly because of that cost per click. Likewise, when I up that to the kind of the middle section, 75 to 150, what we see here now is that this is pretty average across the board. So if you're a hotel in that range, 75 to 150, all of your metrics should be working very nicely. Conversion rate at 8%. By the way, I'm usually looking for a conversion rate no lower than a 5%. Anything over a 5%, 
you ought to be able to play with this and make your numbers work. Now, as we get to that next category, 150 to 300, now here we see that my cost of sale actually goes down significantly because of the fact that my average booking value has increased, almost doubled, right? From 271 to 428. Actually, that's not doubled, but anyway. So we can see that that helped out my cost of sale significantly. As a result, my return on ad spend went up significantly. Now, what we also see here, though, is my conversion rate did not change a lot from that previous category. We were almost dead even on the conversion rates. So still converting signif uh, significantly uh, with that average revenue going up, right? So those numbers work. But when we got over $300, now all of a sudden what we saw are two things. My conversion rate dropped significantly and my cost per click went up significantly. Now I'm over the $4 mark. Boy, that's expensive, right? Uh, but because of my average booking value still being really strong, my cost of sale and return on ad spend worked out very nicely. Last but not least, I wanted to compare this with a group that had a high impression share to the tune of better than 70%. Uh, this means that these types of hotels were always coming up above the fold and always had prime price placement on there. So their cost per click was higher, $3.68. Uh, but what we also saw was that that conversion rate went down. Even though they're not in that $300 plus category, the conversion rate went down. Well, that's also related to the click-through rate, CTR you see on the right-hand side going down. That's because we have what's called the law of diminishing returns. Getting more volume does not necessarily mean you get more bookings, right? There, there's going to be a part where that plateaus and levels off a little bit. Uh, but still in this case, because they had a strong booking value uh, and still a, enough traffic to get some business out of that, their return on ad spend was still manageable to go with that. So when I talk about return on ad spend, usually for meta search, I'm looking for something between about a seven to one to a nine to one. Somewhere in that range is usually when we find where we find the sweet spot, uh, balancing out getting as much business as I can versus making sure it has a good return. Okay, now let's talk about this post COVID. For that, I'm actually going to switch over to a spreadsheet. We're going to do a live interactive spreadsheet here for a moment because we really have to look at the numbers. The numbers really tell us what we're dealing with here. And I've set this up so that we can play with them a little bit. You'll notice that I've carried over those same numbers that we saw on my previous sheet, but I've extrapolated a little bit of data such as length of stay values, clicks to book, uh, cost of sale, and so forth. Now I can go in here and I can look at some of these. So let's First of all, look at our average daily rate. We know that average daily rates are down. Let's assume now that they are down. I've heard a lot of different numbers. Let's say that we're down by 20%. Okay, so 20% lower on that. I'm going to say that my click-through rate is about even. Uh, that probably went down a little bit, but not significantly. But our conversion rate, I suspect, has gone down quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to call that also a minus 20%. Okay, and then finally our cost per click. So this is where it gets interesting because although those numbers are down, there was a time that we saw Google cost per click, believe it or not, as low as 25 cents per click. And that was for a large group of hotels that was getting an 80% impression share. That was crazy. Now, they're not at that level anymore. I will tell you that. However, they are much lower than what they used to be. So I'm actually going to call this at a minus 40%. Now look what this does with our numbers over here. Even with our airport hotels, which previously we were struggling to get over a five to one ROAS, now all of a sudden they're at a 6.2. They're above the six mark. And all of these other numbers actually have gone up to the point in fact where that 150 to 300 range, even above a 10 to one. So I would actually say they need a higher impression share. So the point of this is that now is a really good time to be working with your MetaSearch programs. We'll talk about some more reasons for that here in a little bit, but just in terms of looking at the math, uh, yes, your ADRs are down. Yes, your conversion rates are down, but your cost per click should also be down. And because of that, you can return a higher return on your ad spend. Okay, so we've talked about what to expect from Meta post COVID as well. So making that MetaSearch work for you in 2021. Number one, have rate parity. That's so very important. OTAs are on MetaSearch 2. Uh, you're not there alone in most cases, and you've got to make sure that your rates are in parity, and that's very transparent. I like undercutting OTAs, but you can't always do that, so take that into consideration. Two, have clear goals. Make sure you're understanding what you're trying to balance between awareness, traffic, return on investment, whatever the case may be. 
Three, utilize assisted booking models in cases. If your own booking engine maybe isn't great, but you can't just rebuild it or replace it right now, utilize those assisted booking engines. Uh, things like Book on Google, things like TripAdvisor's Instant Book, Trivago Express, and so on. They all have a variation of those programs. And also, if you're looking at targeting an audience that speaks a foreign language, but you haven't built a foreign language website, that can be a really good way around that. And then finally, have a strategy across multiple channels. We've talked largely about Google, but they're not the only game in town. Make sure you're taking into consideration all those other channels. So with that, that leads us to budgeting for MetaSearch. Budgeting for MetaSearch, there are really three primary ways of doing that, okay? So what should I budget for MetaSearch? Well, first and foremost, theoretically and philosophically, it should be uncapped. Why do I say that? Well, because if you're running a MetaSearch campaign and you've got a cost of sale, say at 12%, and the OTAs are charging you 15%, well, by shutting off your meta search campaign, effectively what you are doing is saying, I would rather not get that booking at 12% cost of sale. I'd rather turn off my own channel and turn it over to an OTA and pay more for it and not get the guest information. So philosophically, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And because of that, it should be uncapped. That's philosophical. Reality is we have marketing budgets, right? <laughs> there are, so there are things that we have to work with. So when we think about our reality and we think about our marketing budgets, there's really kind of two ways I'm gonna call it 2.5 ways that we can take a look at that. One of them is a commission model. Almost every one of the MetaSearch channels, Google included, are offering commission models now. So rather than having to pay a cost per click, you just set and forget it and you just pay them a commission, usually based on consumed bookings. That's really nice. That's a really low risk way of doing things. Uh, and you can even tweak your commissions up and down a little bit to be more or less aggressive. So you get a little bit of control off of that. So that could be a really good way of, of having to not use an upfront budget and paying on the back end based on a consumed reservation, just like you would for an OTA. Now, the disadvantage to doing that, however, is that you don't get a lot of control. I can't say, for example, that I want to be more aggressive for this upcoming weekend. I can't look at booking windows. I can't look at day of week patterns. Um, I can't look at things like a default date that the guest searches for versus a specific date. There are a lot of different elements that I am not able to tweak now and have control over what I'm doing with my meta. Uh, but it's still a good way to get in there and be active. The other thing that I see a lot of companies do is use a percentage of the media spend. So I've got my media spend that's allocated to different programs, be that search engine marketing, uh, be a display and different things like that. It should be a percentage of that that is fairly consistent. So as that goes up and down, your meta search dollars should be going up and down as well. It should run as a parallel path to that. Now I promised a 0.5 way in there as well, right? So there's another model too. You will see there are companies, including something that we do at metasearchmarketing.com that do enable you to use a fixed fee model for a flat $150 a month, give or take, actually it depends on a few variables, uh, but we can get small hotels. This is really focused on small properties up and running on a MetaSearch campaign. That 10 room bed and breakfast in Lincoln, Nebraska and properties like that, okay? All right, that leads us to part six, Meta as part of a larger direct booking initiative and how that works. And as we put that together, we have to realize that there are bigger things in the picture, other elements that we're working with as part of our direct booking. Now, the first thing that we want to think about is just within MetaSearch alone. There are many different channels. And so we want to think about what we call a cross-channel optimization program. What do I mean by that? Well, if we look at this slide, we see examples where we've got channel A, B, and C. Okay, channel A is just killing it. They've got a 13 to one return on investment, uh, but they don't have as much as many clicks as channel C does on there, right? So when I adjust this, what I can do is actually, I'm gonna sacrifice that 13 to one a little bit. Quite honestly, that's too high. I wanna bring that down to a nine to one. At the same time, my channel C, you notice their return on investment was just barely above a five. So I wanna reel that in a little bit and Yes, that's going to sacrifice clicks. Yes, that's going to uh, change those dynamics, but I'm going to get that return on investment up. So by using cross-channel optimization, I can now pull from one, apply it to another, and make sure I'm getting the best results off of that. But within the larger marketing funnel, there are three key methods that we use. We have prospecting, that's very high level, 
We have driving intent, which is our mid-level, and then we have direct response, which is really at the bottom of the funnel, and that's where we've got uh, a lot more intent from the consumer to book a reservation. That's where MetaSearch lives most of the time because of the fact that it's usually at the end of that booking process. They're about ready to buy at that stage of the game. MetaSearch should also be using a last touch attribution model. What do I mean by that? This shouldn't be something that's looking at you touched it and for the next 30 days, anything that happens, I get credit for it. No, you click, you book, you convert, you track, right? That's a last touch attribution and one can be directly related to the other. Within Google in particular, we have many different KPIs that we can look at. And within our paid webinar series, actually, we go through all of these and talk about how they're related to one another, how they tie together, which ones impact the others and so forth, and how we can match those up. So that's really important to understand not only how we work with those, but also what this information can tell us about consumer buying behavior. Eligible impressions is a really good example of that. Am I getting any eligible impressions? Are people searching for hotels in my market? How is that going up and down? And that can give, give us some early indicators. But what else do we want to plan for Meta? Well, it's more important now than ever to get those direct bookings. Why? Because we need to control the communication, especially with COVID going on right now. Heaven forbid, but we know it can happen, that there's a major COVID outbreak in your area and you have to close the hotel and you have to tell guests that those stays have to be relocated, canceled, postponed, whatever the case may be. Do you wanna be having those conversations or do you wanna let the OTAs have those conversations? Well, you want to, right? Because you wanna be able to try to rebook them later on. And then the final part is also what we call remarketing. This gets into your display advertising and we're going to see changes in this. Right now, when we talk about display advertising, uh, advertisers can use third-party cookie data, such as, okay, I'm looking for people who like long walks on the beach in Key West in the month of December, right? So this is third-party cookie data, and I'm going to try to target them and put display ads in front of them. Well, there are rules coming into, into place that are going to change all of that to where you have to use first-party cookie data, meaning I have to have you get to my site before I can remarket to you. Why do we like remarketing? Well, because it has really good returns on investment. So let's say that I visited a hotel site like Ramada in this example, and later on down the road, I'm on space.com looking at Proxima Centauri for who knows what. And we see these banner ads that pop up on the site. We know statistically that these have a very high return, right? So now you, I've got you to my site, I got you to look, now I'm trying to drive that intent. I'm trying to reel you in and get you back there to book that reservation. Okay, so that concludes all of our topics for today. I hope it gave you a good overview of MetaSearch 101 for 2021, and we've given you some valuable insight into the things that we should be looking at. I do welcome you to, of course, take a look at our paid webinar series. We cover topics such as MetaSearch connectivity. How does that work, and how does that impact your rate parity? We talk about branded top-off programs and when it is a good time to or not to take advantage of those. We do a deep dive into Google, TripAdvisor, Trivago, Kayak, and Bing, all of those in different sessions so you can have a full understanding of how those work. This is especially ideal if you are the person at a hotel who suddenly had this dropped in your lap. Hey, can you manage MetaSearch? Why, yes, you can, because we'll give you the tools and the understanding how to do that. If you are a digital marketing agency that is, has been tasked by that hotel to run a MetaSearch campaign, you haven't done this before, this is really ideal for you to take a look at because it gives you all of the information you need about how those are going to be working. So with that, I do want to thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Feel free to reach out to us at the information shown here, and we look forward to seeing you down the road.